Hello everyone and hello to the ladies over at Girls at Scuba. My name is Janvi Kramer and I'm the face behind Below and Beyond Art. Today I'm welcoming you into my creator space which is here. It's where I spend a lot of my time relaxing, drawing and painting fishes and marine mammals. I've teamed up with Girls at Scuba to invite you into this space to help you learn a few tips and tricks to maybe help you be creative at home. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is have a nice setup. It's really important to have a really nice laid out working space that helps to keep your mind focused and it's nice to have everything within arm's length. So you can see here, I've got my watercolor paper. I'm working with cold press rough texture paper and I'm working in a size that's a bit smaller than A5, but recently I've quite enjoyed working small. It makes me focus more on the detail um, rather than worrying about covering a whole page. So that's how I'm gonna be working today. I've got a couple of mixing palettes that you can see here. I also have some clean water, some tissue for cleaning my brush. And here I've got a color palette. This is just a watercolor palette. I'll show you quickly. This one's a really lovely one because it's got lots of different colors. Um, so I don't have to worry too much about mixing today while I'm showing you, but any set is really useful. Um, even if you've just got the primary colors, it's nice to have fun and mix some different ones. So we're gonna be drawing the copper banded butterfly fish. I've just got a reference image on my phone here, which you can see, which I'll keep next to me the whole time because it's important to keep referring back to it. Now, because of the shape of this fish, I'm actually just gonna be drawing kind of a cartoony outline. So if we figure out roughly the center of the page, if you remember what it's like drawing a skeleton fish when you're a kid, that's kind of how I'm gonna be drawing the head. And remember the sketching is actually the most important stage because this is where we make sure that we have our proportions right and that the fish looks like the fish we're trying to draw. And it is totally okay to make as many mistakes as required at this point. So these are, this is the basic shape I'm gonna to use today. So it's just a nice round body with, like I said, a cartoony fish skeleton head, I guess we'll call it. So once I've got that, it is roughly in the center of the page as you can hopefully see. But what I'm also gonna do now is just do a very light center line across it. And that will prevent us ending up with any weird wonky fishes towards the end. All of these lines will be erased further down the line. So this is the point where you really want to have your reference picture to hand. So mine is just on my phone. Sometimes it's helpful to actually print it out. I spend quite a lot of time at the start going through internet searches, looking through all the books I have, just to find a really good high quality image. Um, with this one, I've been lucky and found a really lovely image um, because I can zoom in and I can find all the detail that I'll need later on. So like I said, we're now gonna just start to fill out the actual shape of the fish. Okay, so now we're ready to paint. Uh, first of all, I'm just gonna show you, I've got a selection of brushes with me here now. Um, I'm gonna keep them all with me because you want to have varied choices for your mark making. I'm gonna start with my thickest brush. We're going to be making a nice wash on the bottom first. So I'm just gonna mix up a light gray blue color. And remember, this is your bottom wash, so you want the paint to be quite thin. Um, so I'm just gonna reach out for one of these. Okay, so at this point, I also like to add in a sense of where my light is hitting the fish. So I'm gonna pick that my highlights are gonna come from this way. So I'm just gonna draw a light arrow on for a reminder for myself and for those of you that are watching. When we start to get to putting the final details on, this is where I want my highlights to be sitting. So these areas will be lighter and the bottom areas will be darker because that's obviously furthest from the light. When you start to add in the highlights and the shading, that's also when we'll start to see a bit more of the three dimensional side of the fish, um, which is often quite hard with fish because they're very, they're almost quite flat a lot of them, um, particularly this butterfly fish. 
Um, so we're just going to try to start adding in a bit of shading. Before I move on to the yellow bands, I'm just going to now work on some more layers for these sections. So as you can see here, um, I'm starting to add in my lighter shades. I'm literally layering on pure white. So I'm using this, this is white gouache. Um, it's just a Dela and Rowney one, um, but I often do use some gouache with my watercolor. It gives you a nice chalky, kind of a matte texture. Um, and it's good for filling out when you're using very thin layers. Okay, so now we've got to this stage, I've just done a basic layer for the white and blue bands. Um, what I'm actually going to do now is just carefully remove um, some of these pencil marks that you can see around here. Um, you must make sure that your paint is dry. Um, I've left this for a few minutes now just to make sure of that. Um, so I'm just going to remove some of these bands before I start working into the yellow layer. Okay, so now we're going to start working with yellow. And again, I'm just going to start off by just adding some water to my palette so we can make a nice thin layer of yellow. And here we go. So what we're going to do now, now that I've got the basic, basic colours down on paper, I'm just going to go back to using a bit of my white gouache again. Um, we're just going to now spend some time outlining where the side fin goes and also adding some colour onto the back fin. Uh, the way I work is I always use these as the lighter spaces, hence why I start the outline with a very light colour. So I'm going to just add a bit of water to the gouache. I just want it to be a bit thinner um, so that it's easier to draw finer lines with. And we're going to be using a very thin brush. So as you can see, for the fin, what I've the back fin, all I've done is use the same yellow that I've worked with here, but I've just really diluted it. So we're just going to add the detail now basically um, and just go crazy with it. There's no point doing this if you're not having fun, so just do what you want and what you think looks great. Okay, so at this point I've taken a bit of time away from this piece. Um, it's quite a normal part of my process for me because it helps me get a bit more perspective on whether I'm happy with where the piece is leading me. Um, sometimes, like today, it does lead me to a point where I realise that there are things I'd like to change. Um, luckily watercolour is quite a forgiving medium to use. Um, so what I would like to change, or at least try to, this could turn into a disaster, but we're going to give it a go, is as you can see here, the dark spot that should be on the top fin, I want it to move over slightly. So what I'm going to use is my stubby brush again, you can see here, there we go. What I'm going to do, I've got clean water again, some fresh tissue. So for this technique, it doesn't always work, I have to admit, but um, I'm showing you these mistakes because the reality of it is that it does happen. It's really frustrating, but if you can find a way to move through it, then 
often it's much nicer and you feel a lot better about the piece when you finally get to the end rather than scrapping it and starting all over again. So as you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm applying a lot of water. It may seem a lot right now, but what you want is to be applying the water. It lifts the watercolor off the paper. I've got some fresh tissue and I'm just gonna be dabbing and lifting that color back off. I'll repeat this several times until I'm happy with how much is lifted. Um, and you should hopefully start to see what I mean when I say that this is luckily quite a forgiving medium. So there we go, I'm quite, it looks a bit messy now, but I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so I'm gonna reach out for my yellow. I'm gonna just work in a few layers again, just so it looks more natural. And you'll start to see where it is that I wanted these lines to be in the first place. So as you can see here, um, I am still working on fixing the earlier mistake, but I'm also starting to add in some white highlights. They look quite crude at the moment, but remember this arrow we drew earlier, so this is where my light source is coming from. Um, so I'm just adding in some more true white on top of the yellow. I've already sort of worked that into the blue bands. You can see as they all fade down, they get darker. Um, so hopefully at the end, you'll get a bit more of a sense of my light source. Okay, so as you can see, I've just spent a bit of time adding in some more darker shading around this area and this area, and I think I've managed to salvage it. I've done a bit more detail around the eye. I haven't done the pupil just yet. I'm gonna hang on for that. What I am gonna do is start working on these fins, this fin and this fin, and maybe add a bit more detail onto this one. Okay, now you can see that the painting is finally wrapping up nicely. So what we're gonna do now is just add on some extra finishing details. So now I'm just gonna use my Micron Sakura pen. It's a very fine, fine liner. I'm using 01 nib. And what I'm gonna do is just carefully outline the outside. This just makes it pop off the page a little bit. You'll notice as I start to do it, I will leave off the edges of the fins cause that would sort of destroy the point of having such transparent fins. And there we have it. This is my version of the copper banded butterfly fish. If you've liked watching me paint and enjoy the work that I create, then please head over to my Instagram or Facebook account at Below and Beyond Art. There you can see the final version of this and also plenty of other things that I've painted. Thank you for your support and thank you for watching.